Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to start the second quest in the Hobbit series. Now I did just get back from Con of the Rings where I think I played Lord of the Rings over that whole weekend 21 times I think and I am still ready to rock. That's got to say something. <laughs> so we're going to start with Over the Misty Mountain Grim. Now I'm going to tell you I did make a couple changes to my dwarf deck and it was because I found an FAQ on the We Are Not Idle card. It used to be that, that would you could exhaust every dwarf character to gain resources. Now it's only dwarf heroes. So I pulled that out and put something different in the deck, so you'll see it as we play. After a brief respite at the House of Elrond in Rivendell, Bilbo and the dwarves began the long climb over the Misty Mountains. Elrond warned them that the mountains were full of danger. Stone giants tossed huge boulders for fun, and evil things lurked in dark caves waiting for unsuspecting travelers to let their guard down. Yet those were the perils. Bilbo and his companions had to face to reach the other side of the mountain and continue their quest. I just want to show you here, we will have two encounter sets in this game. The first part will be using these two encounter sets, the second set will be using these two encounter sets. And here, this states that we can use treasure cards that we gained, which we did, heck yeah, <laughs> uh, from the last scenario. After a refreshing stay in the House of Elrond, Bilbo and his companions resumed their quest to the Lonely Mountain, but to reach Erebor they first had to climb the high pass over the Misty Mountains. When revealed, each player may search their deck for one treasure card and add it to his hand, then shuffle the deck and advance to Stage 2A. I decided to stay thematic, and the only treasure card that I have in my deck is Orcrys, because I do have Thorin. <laughs> it's going to give Thorin plus two attack, after the attached hero destroys an orc, add one resource to the hero's resource pool. Yeah, that is perfect for Thorn. When he peeped out in the lightning flashes, he saw that across the valley the stone giants were out and were hurling rocks at one another for a game and catching them and tossing them down into darkness where they smashed among the trees far below or splintered into little bits with a bang. When revealed, search the encounter deck for one copy of Stone Giant and add it to the staging area. Then shuffle the encounter deck and reveal one card per player from the encounter deck and add it to the staging area. Here we have our Stone Giant. It says here, while at least one Stone Giant is in, is in the staging area, the Galloping Boulders card gains Surge. Ugh. After Stone, Stone Giant engages a player, that player chooses and discards one ally he controls. <laughs> yeah, so we don't really want to engage him if we don't have to. And the top card here is uh, Wind Whipped Rain. When revealed, discard all non-treasure, non-objective attachments in play. Whew! Okay, I don't have any. But that would stink if we drew that during the game. <laughs> Let's go ahead and draw our six cards. Plus, we have Orchrist in our hand. Gandalf. Narvi's Belt. Ooh, that's nice. Hardy Leadership. One, two, three. Four, Will of the West. Five, Ring Mail. And six, Erebor Guard. Hmm. You know, I'm thinking I am going to mulligan that. I want some dwarves that we can put out right away. Let's go ahead and try this again. We have Will of the West again. Okay. Uh, a Test of Will. That's nice. Ring Mail. We have Erdloon Miner. That's a bummer. We have another Test of Will. And we have a Dwarven Cell Sword. Okay, well, not great, but it'll work. <laughs> so that's our six cards. We'll go ahead and start the round by drawing a card, another ring mail, and go ahead and gain one resource each for each of our heroes. That's four, remember, because we do have Bilbo. In case you haven't watched the first episode for the Hobbit series, here are our four heroes, Thorin, Dane, Nori, and Bilbo, and we have 32 starting threat. With this, I think the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and place Orchrist right on Thorin. That is not a question. We're also going to play the Dwarven Sellsword. That costs one leadership resource. And because we just played a dwarf from our hand, we'll reduce our threat down to 31. Then I think, because I kind of like this idea, let's go ahead and take a chance. We are going to also play Air Loon Miner from our hand. That is all three of these resources. But now we pushed our threat all the way down to 30. And now we have five dwarves, which means Thorn will gain two resources around. Because we have Dane, all dwarves are plus one willpower and plus one attack. So I think we'll go ahead and send Nori for three. Our dwarven cell sword for three, that's a total of six. Heirloon miner for two, that's eight. And we might as well send Bilbo for a total of nine. So right now it is nine to four. 
We did use all of our resources, so that means we cannot cancel this card with our when revealed, our test of will. Oh, we have an overhanging rock. While overhanging rock is the active location, it gains. Spend one Bilbo resource to look at the top two cards of your deck. Add one of those to your hand and discard the other. Ooh. Okay, well, we have a total threat of six in the staging area. We quested for a total of nine, so we'll go ahead and place three of progress on the current quest card. And yet these are uh, really cool tokens, you guys. I will have in the description below a link if you want to go ahead and purchase some. It's from Draculus Tokens. Then I think it makes sense during the travel phase to go ahead and travel to the over uh, overhanging rock. I am definitely not going to optionally engage that stone giant. I do not want to lose one of my allies. So I'm going to go ahead and end the round. We will refresh, knock our threat up to 31. We'll generate resources. Now I'm going to keep this Dwarven Cell Sword. Actually, I can't. It says at the end of the round. I can't pay it. Oh, I should have thought about that. Oh, that's a big bummer. All right, well, our Dwarven Cell Sword is gone. So that means we're only going to gain four resources, not five. Oh, that is just poor planning on my fault, or on my part. Then we'll draw another card, and we have our Dunedain Remedy. So I didn't use this last time, but this card will allow us to heal, and we can bounce it around between our three heroes by spending one resource. And when we do that, boom, the next uh, hero that it latches onto or attaches to will heal. So I think the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and look at this overhanging rock. We're going to spend one of Bilbo's resources to activate its effect. Its effect. We can uh, look at the top two cards of our deck, add one of them to the ha our hand, and discard the other. So we'll go ahead and look at both of these. Ah, <sighs> yes. Okay, well, we'll grab one Erebor guard. We'll discard the other, but it's not a dwarf that I can play, which is a bummer. So with that, let's go ahead and quest. We'll quest for one plus three. That's a total of five, six, seven, and I think I'm going to take a chance. I am also going to quest with Th Thorin. 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 to 4. And we get a crow. Okay, a suspicious crow. When revealed, reveal the top card of the encounter deck discard pile and add it to the staging area. Oh, that's really not bad. That's just this. When revealed, discard all non-treasure card objectives, uh, attachments in play. Well, there aren't any anyways. <laughs> Okay, and that only added one threat, so we only have a total of five threat to our 11 that we used. 11 to 5 means we placed six progress. Three will go on this location and complete it, and the other three will go on the quest card. We only need 10 more progress to get through here. During the encounter phase, this suspicious crow will come and engage us because our threat is 31. His engagement cost is 25. I, because I think, yeah, Dane can take him out. So I'm going to go undefended on this attack. And we have the defending player raises his threat by two. Uh, one, two. So we're already at 33. And I have to place one point of damage. That's not bad. I'll place that on Dane. Then we'll exhaust Dane. Dane will have two attack. That'll take out the crow. And then we'll end our round. We'll increase our threat all the way to 34. Ow. Okay. And we will draw another card. And we have Gloin. We, of course, will also gain our resources. And now that we have Gloin, that makes me happy. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to play both Erebor Guard and Gloin. So we'll do Erebor Guard first. So we have to use two blue resources because the other two, we can instead decrease the cost of him by discarding two cards from our deck. So here's our deck. We have one. Oh, we lost a Gandalf. And two. Oh! <laughs> Yes, hidden cash. That's just what I wanted. Hidden cash, we can generate two resources for any hero that we control. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that for Nori. So Nori will still have two resources. Erebor Guard will be out in play. We'll reduce our threat by one. And then we'll go ahead and spend three resources to bring in Gloin. But we now, one, two, three, four, five, have a total of five dwarves in play. It gains, after you play Gloin from your hand, choose a hero, add two, hero, or two resources to that hero's resource pool. So I'll spend one, two, and one. So two from Thorn and one from Dane. It's a total of three to bring them out. And then get two of those resources back and put them back on Thorn. Nice. And not only that, we will decrease our threat down to 32. Last but not least, 
We're going to go ahead and play Dunedain Remedy. We will attach that to Dane, so Dane will immediately heal by one. So after Dunedain, Reni is at uh, Dunedain Remedy is attached to a hero, heal one damage on that hero. Pay one resource from the attached hero's resource pool to attach Dunedain Remedy to another hero. <laughs> and I've got healing out. This is great. For questing this round, let's go ahead and send Nori for three, uh, Erlun Miner for five, Gloin for eight, a total of eight. There's four in the staging area. Do I want to, you know what, why not? We'll add Bilbo for nine. So nine to four. We'll reveal the top card here. And we have a definite when revealed effect we want to discard. <laughs> Discard all non-treasure, uh, non-objective attachments. Well, I guess I only have one, but it's my healing. I think it's worth it. And I have two test of wills in my hand, so we'll go ahead and spend one of Nori's resources to negate that. I am not discarding attachments. Thank you very much. Nine minus four for our questing means we place another five on the quest card. Five, ten, eleven. We just need four more progress, and there's no locations in the staging area. So yeah, I am definitely not going to be traveling. I'm not going to engage that stone giant. Let's go ahead and jump, or end this round, and go to the next. We've already refreshed. We'll increase our threat to 33. We'll generate resources. I think I forgot to show you guys that Bilbo gained a resource last time. So he does have two. And Thorin gains two because we have more than, or five, or more dwarves out. And we'll draw a card. Come on, be something good, be something good. Ooh, oh, this is kind of fun. This is one of the new ones, Well-Equipped. Well-Equipped is kind of a fun card. What we do is we discard the top two cards of your deck. You may attach one attachment card discarded this way to an eligible dwarf character. <laughs> Don't even have to pay for it. So we'll flip. Oh, that's our second Gandalf. Okay, and we, hey, we've got an Unexpected Courage. Oh yeah, so we're definitely going to put that Unexpected Courage on Dane. That way he can defend and still attack, or others can attack, and that means he is ready and they are ready to add their willpower. Now you might see in my hand I do have these ring mails, and I don't have any red in my deck. Well, I do have my Narvi belts. I've been hoping that I'd find one because these would be super nice to make our uh, dwarves just a little bit hardier. That is what it is. We can't play them, and I can't play anything else in my hand, so we're going to go ahead and quest. I don't think I want to push too hard here. If I had one more turn in this stage, I think I'd be happy. So we'll go ahead and quest three, four, and five, six. And there's four in the staging area. Uh, seven, eight, nine. We'll do nine to four. And we will flip. When revealed, discard all Bilbo resources. That's... Okay, well, that's not terrible, except for if you know what's happening next. I think I'm just going to leave it, though. I'll get another resource from Bilbo next round. So I'll go ahead and discard these two. Oh, you know what? Actually, if I don't... You know what? I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> this seems kind of crazy. But because of what we just quested with, we are going to move to the next round. I don't want Bilbo to lose his resources, and you're going to see why. So I am going to play our second Test of Will. I will use Nori's resource to stop that so that we still have Bilbo's resources because they're going to be super helpful. <laughs> and 9 to 4 means we place 5 exact progress on here. That you, you know what that means. We move to the next quest card. Oh, jump the goblins. Big goblins. Great, ugly-looking goblins. Lots of goblins. Before you could say rocks and blocks. When revealed, shuffle all encounter cards back into the encounter deck and set it aside inactive. The second encounter deck becomes active, and then we search the encounter deck for the Great Goblin and add it to the staging area, and then shuffle the encounter deck. So yeah, we didn't even have to deal with this stone giant, which is great, but we're going to have to deal with the Great Goblin. Players cannot defeat this stage unless the Great Goblin is in the victory display. Reveal three encounter cards per player. Bilbo Baggins may spend X resources to reduce the total number of encounter cards revealed by X. You see, this is why I wanted his resources. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend the two Bilbo resources that I have here so I only have to reveal one uh, encounter card instead of three. <laughs> totally worth it. But it does mean that I have no more Test of Wills in my hand. And we have a goblin, which of course has Surge. So he's going to surge into a great or a goblin axeman. <laughs> if you look here, this is our three enemies in the staging area. 20 engagement cost, 25, and 15. That means all three of these are going to engage us. 
This is also the reason why I did not yet want to move to this stage, but <laughs> I did, so it is what it is. I think our first thing we're going to do is have this Goblin Axeman attack. It says for each cave location in play, it gets plus one attack. There aren't any cave locations, that's why I want him to attack first. He only attacks for one, so I'm going to go undefended. And I'll reveal this, and it says attacking enemy gets plus two instead of this. Oh no, only plus one. It's plus two instead of the Great Goblin is in the victory display. It's not. So I take two damage. I think I'm going to go ahead and place that on Nori here. Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and defend with our Erebor Guard here for this three attack. It says, defending player deals damage among characters he controls equal to the number of goblin enemies engaged with him. <laughs> so that's three. So we'll go ahead and do one to, uh, no, you know what? I kind of want to keep it on the heroes because I can move back that um, day in remedy. So I'm going to do one, one, and one. Each one of our heroes got hit with that. <laughs> and he attacked for three. The Erebor guard has two defense, so he'll get hit for one point of damage. And then finally, we have our Great Goblin here. He's attacking for five. Dane has three defense. Oh, you know what? I think before I get too stupid, I'm going to put two damage on Thorin instead of having to damage on Dane just because Dane is going to have to defend against this Great Goblin. Now, this says, after the Great Goblin attacks, discard X cards from the encounter deck where X is the number of players in the game. Add each goblin enemy discarded by this effect to the staging area. <laughs> He's just going to keep on giving. So, oh, I forgot to exhaust our Erebor. We will also exhaust Dane to defend. It's five points of damage. Attacking enemy gets plus one. So that's six points of damage. Defended for three. So we'll go ahead and place three points of damage on Dane. See, that's the whole reason why I didn't want to place another one there. And we'll take the top card here. We will discard it. And it's an enemy, so that goes into the staging area. Great. Now, though, it's our time to attack. So I am going to exhaust Unexpected Courage. So Dane is ready. That means that uh, Thorin over here has three attack plus one from Dane, which is four, plus two more because he has Orcrise. That's a total of six. Three, four, five, six. With his six attack, he's going to do four points of damage to the Great Goblin. The Great Goblin has two shield, so that six minus two is four. That means that Thorin can kill him next time. Oh, and Dane is technically ready. So Dane is ready. He can attack, but if he attacks, he loses the plus one. Might as well, though, and he will hit this Goblin Runner for one point of damage. But now I'm going to have to be ready to defend against four enemies next round. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can do it. To end the round, we'll go ahead and increase our threat by one. We're at 34. We will refresh everyone. We still have five um, dwarves out. So Thorn will gain two resources, which is wonderful. Everyone else will gain one, including Bilbo. So one, one. And of course, we'll draw our card. And we have Feely. That's amazing. Before we play anything, we're going to heal up our heroes a bit. So this Dunedain Remedy is here. We're going to spend one of Dane's resources to attach that to Nori. Nori will then heal by one. Then Nori is going to spend one of his resources, bring this over to Thorin. Thorin's going to heal by one. I love this Dunedain Remedy. Then we'll spend one of Thorin's resources to move this over to Dane. Dane will go down to only two points of damage. <laughs> this is why this is worth it. Uh, then we'll go ahead and spend one of Dane's to bring this back to Thorin, who will heal to full. And then we'll spend one of Thorin's again to bring this over to Dane, so he'll heal again. I just need Dane to be healed enough that he can take another attack by that great goblin. So I've got enough resources for what I want to do. I'm going to spend one more, bring this over to Nori. He'll heal, and then we'll spend one from Nori to bring this over to Dane. Dane is fully healed. <laughs> <laughs> I love those Dunedain remedies. Then we'll go ahead and spend three more of Thorin's resources so we can bring out Feely. And you know what Feely does. Feely, if you play during the preparation phase, can bring out Keely. And we'll decrease our threat by one. So we're at 33. I can search my deck. And now we also have Keely out. 
Yes. Currently, we only have one threat in the staging area, so I don't want to overquest. I need to take care of at least four enemies. So I'm going to go ahead and send Nori for three, Gloin for three. That's a total of six, and I might just leave it at that. We'll do six to two. There's two in the staging area. We'll flip this card, and we have the Goblin's Caves. While the Goblin Caves is the active location, goblins get plus one threat. So that just added a total of four threat because there's one goblin in the staging area. So four, well, three plus three is a total of six. And you know what? That's exactly what we quested for. Okay, cool. So we are definitely going to pull this out because, it, oh, wait, you know what? It's while well, it's the active location, so I'm wrong. We only have five total threat in the staging area. We quested for six, so we get to place one glorious progress on down down to the goblin town we need 20 more or 19 more jeez okay and i do think we are going to travel here just to get that three threat out of the staging area and then during the encounter phase this goblin axeman is going to uh engage us and we do have an a cave location in play so both goblin axemen will get plus one attack each enemy here will get a shadow card and then let's see who do i want to defend with first i think the first thing we'll do is we will use our erebor guard to defend against this three attack and we of course get a shadow effect the defending player exhausts one character he controls <laughs> man well we'll exhaust bilbo i don't know why i didn't quest with him but hey it worked <laughs> then this goblin axeman he is attacking for two and I think I'm going to go undefended on this. Oh, nice. Nothing there. So we just place two points of damage on Thorin. Then we have this other Goblin Axon. He's attacking for two. Let me think about this. I think with how everything's going, I'm going to go undefended on this attack too. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Nothing there. We'll drop this two damage on... You know what? <laughs> Bilbo's a hero. So we'll drop two damage on Bilbo. That's a little risky, but it is what it is. And this last one we are definitely defending with Dane. So he's defending for three defense. Defending player deals damage among characters he controls equal to the number of goblin enemies engaged. Come on. Okay. Oh, you know what? I also forgot Erebor should have taken one point of damage because of those goblin runners, I believe. So I'm just going to start damaging... Keely for one, Feely for one, and then our Arid Loon Miner for one, and Gloin for one. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea, but I don't want to damage the heroes anymore. But now I think it's time for us to fight back. Thorin, well, first of all, I'm going to use Unexpected Courage to ready Dane. So Dane is ready and giving everyone the plus one bonus. Thorn has four attack, plus two is six. Six minus two is four. That's an... Oh, dang. I've got to do the Great Goblin. So i got to reveal this. If this is an enemy, we have to add it to the staging area. Oh, man. Are you serious? We have another enemy. Okay. But the nice thing is here, this Great Goblin is toast. We just took him out. Okay. He's in the victory display. That is one of the things we needed to do in order to win this specific quest. Thorn is exhausted, but we also gain a resource because he killed a goblin. Because <laughs> he has Orchrist. That's awesome. We'll go ahead then and attack with Keely and Feely. Both have plus one attack, so that's a total of four. That will take out this goblin axeman. We'll then attack over here with Arid Loon Miner. He'll attack for two. One shield. Second one will kill this goblin runner. Nice. And unfortunately, I think that is it because I cannot take out that Goblin Axeman. He has two armor. Dane will only have a total of two attack. So I think we're going to end the round. But that was a clearing. That felt good. We're at 34 threat. We'll refresh everyone up here. It's feeling good. And then we will gain resources. And we'll also add the two damage that Dane should have because he did get attacked by the Goblin King. I was so excited about being able to take him out. I forgot to put that there. And then we'll draw a card. And we have our third Gandalf. Nice. 
Now, I don't generally recommend this, especially when you have sneak attacks, but I really needed something here, and Gandalf is perfect. Come on, it's totally thematic. Here he comes, jumps in, helps us out. Yeah, the goblin is killed, but still. <laughs> so, what we can do, I am spending two Bilbo resources, one Nori, and two of Thorns. We are going to deal four damage to one enemy in play. And I think the one we're going to do is the one that's engaged with us, because we need four points of damage with this. He's done. Okay, toast. We're then going to go ahead and do this Dunedain signal. So we're going to pay a one here to move it here to heal one. And then we're going to spend one from here to move back over to Dane to heal one. That way we've just got a little bit more health for our two big heroes. Let's go ahead now and quest like crazy. So we're going to send Gandalf on the quest for four. Nori for a total of seven. Bilbo for eight. Keely and Feely over here will both add two for a total of 12. We've got the Heirloom Miner for another two, so that's 13, 14. We have Gloin for three, 15, 16, 17. We'll go ahead and flip the encounter card, and we have When Revealed. All engaged enemies return to the staging area, then each goblin enemy gets plus one threat until the end of the phase. Oh, we don't have any engaged with us, and that just means we have two out in the staging area. How can I forget? We have our cave here that adds plus one. So we have a total of three in the staging area. Plus one because of this card, because it's the active location, and plus one because of that when revealed we just drew. We quested for 17. 17 minus three is 15. Then 15 minus three is 12. We just placed 12 progress on this location. <laughs> or on this quest card. 10, and here we go. Total of 13. We only need 20. And of course we need to kill all the enemies. But nothing else is in the staging area here. We'll go ahead and engage these goblin runners. Let's take them out. The goblin runners attack for three. We'll exhaust Dane to defend. And of course there's a shadow effect. Defending player deals damage among characters he controls equal to the number of goblins engaged. Psh, that's only one. We'll go ahead and place one point of damage on uh, Nori. That should be fine. Dane totally blocks that attack. Then we'll go ahead and ready him, and we'll have Thorin attack for six, kills an orc, gains a resource. Thanks, Orc Christ. <laughs> okay, that ends the round. We'll jump up to 35 threat. Gandalf goes away. Bummer. <laughs> we now gend our resources, and we'll draw a card, and we have another test of will. Okay, that's actually nice. What do you guys say we get ourselves out of here? <laughs> I'm going to spend one Dane resource to move this over to Thorin, so he'll heal for one. And then I'm going to do the same thing with Thorin, just to move it back to heal Dane for one. That way both of them are healed. We now can go questing. I'll quest two with Keely, four total with Feely, five with Bilbo, six, seven, eight with Nori, 9, 10 with Heirloom Miner, 11, 12, 13 with Gloin. 13 to 0. And we get a location. 4, 2. Man, while this is the act of locations, players cannot attack goblin enemies. The first player may spend two of Bilbo resources to treat front porches, printed text boxes if it were blank until the end of the round. <laughs> That's such good. Such a cool thematic location. I've actually never seen that one, even though I've played this one before. 13, though, minus 4 gives us a total of 9. 9 progress with nothing out in the staging area. And the goblin, uh, the great goblin, out here in the victory display, we just won this quest. Well, there you have it. That was Over the Misty Mountains Grim. That was quite fun. It actually was a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. But as you can see, it was super helpful. I had Bilbo resources to be able to play and cancel those initial goblins from coming out. Sincerely helped us here in this one. I do have to say, Dunedain Remedy is our MVP for this game. <laughs> Being able to just jump back and forth and heal our dwarves like nobody's business. Yeah, totally awesome. And really, if you think about it, Nori keeping our threat down too. Yeah, ugh. Loved it. Okay, thanks so much. Next, we'll go to the second quest of Casa Doom, and then we'll come back to The Hobbit. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you at the next stop. Whoa!